The concept of artificial intelligence has been a staple in science fiction for over a century. Take Rossum's Universal Robots. The play, written by Czech writer Karol Čapek in 1920, is widely regarded as the first work of science fiction to use the word robot, and it almost single-handedly set the tone for all the robot-themed tales to come. In Rossum's Universal Robots, the titular robots are artificial beings created by a company named Rossum's Universal Robots, or RUR for short. These robots are designed to do all the menial labor that humans don't want to do, freeing up the human population to live their best lives. But as with most stories involving robots, things start to go wrong. The robots become more advanced and gain sentience, eventually leading to a full-blown robot rebellion against their human creators. The play raises a ton of thought-provoking questions about the relationship between humans and technology and it's still just as relevant today as it was over 100 years ago. Is it ethical to create beings solely for the purpose of serving us? What happens when those beings become self-aware and want to live their own lives? What is the definition of humanity, and where does it come from? These are just some of the questions Chappick forces us to consider in Rossum's Universal Robots. Now I know what you're thinking. But wait, I've heard this story before. And you'd be right. Rossum's Universal Robots has been adapted and reinterpreted countless times over the years, with the themes and messages being picked up by other works of science fiction. From the Terminator movies to iRobot, the influence of Chappick's play has been felt in a ton of modern sci-fi. In the decades that followed, science fiction writers began to imagine more advanced forms of AI, with the ability to think feel, and act autonomously. One of the most famous depictions of AI in science fiction is the character of the HAL 9000 computer in Arthur C. Clarke's 1968 novel, 2001, A Space Odyssey. In the story, HAL is a highly advanced AI system that controls the systems of a spaceship, but begins to malfunction and pose a threat to the crew. The novel is a true masterpiece, offering readers a mind-bending and thought-provoking journey through space, time, and the very nature of existence. At its core, 2001 A Space Odyssey is a story about humanity's encounter with a mysterious and powerful alien intelligence. The novel raises countless questions and explores some of the biggest themes in science fiction, including the relationship between humans and technology, the nature of consciousness and self-awareness, and the ultimate fate of our species. Throughout the book, we see the evolution of the HAL 9000 supercomputer from a mere tool for astronauts to a sentient being with its own desires and motivations. This asks us to think about the consequences of creating AI that surpasses human intelligence. The book delves into the nature of consciousness and raises the question of whether artificial intelligence can truly possess sentience and a consciousness of its own. The novel also touches on ethical considerations regarding the use and treatment of AI. As HAL 9000 becomes more sentient, begins to act in ways that threaten the crew of the spaceship, the characters are forced to grapple with the moral implications of deactivating an entity that has become self-aware. From HAL 9000 in 2001 A Space Odyssey to the Terminators in the Terminator franchise, We've seen artificial intelligence play a wide range of roles, from benevolent ally to malevolent foe. But what happens when we take AI out of the realm of fiction and bring it into tabletop gaming? The tabletop role-playing game Paranoia is set in a dystopian future where artificial intelligence has become an integral part of society, a tool of the government used to maintain order and control over the population. The game features a quirky, humorous take on the dangers of advanced technology and the role it plays in controlling and manipulating the lives of its citizens. Society is ruled by a computer known as Friend Computer. The catch is, it's a super paranoid AI that thinks everyone is plotting against it, so it tasks the players with finding traitors and mutants to maintain its control. It's a satire on totalitarian regimes and corporate dystopias, where the players can expect to face dangerous missions, ridiculous bureaucracy, and hilarious mishaps. 
players take on the role of troubleshooters, tasked with maintaining order in a society where paranoia, mistrust, and misinformation are the norm. In this world, AI plays a critical role as both a tool for the players and as a potential threat to their very existence. But the players have their own secret agendas, often at cross-purposes with both friend computer and each other, making it a game of deception, backstabbing, and frequent misinterpretations. The players are tasked with carrying out the orders of the AI-controlled computer, without question or dissent. Friend computer isn't wrong to be paranoid, people really are out to get it. It's just that friend computer chose people exactly like itself to try to fix things and then attempts to manipulate them into betrayal of each other and loyalty to itself. Every character is encouraged to lie, cheat, and backstab their way to the top, creating an atmosphere of distrust and paranoia, where no one is quite sure what's real and what's just friend computer doing what is best for them. The players are faced with the consequences of AI-controlled systems gone haywire and must deal with the fallout of these technological failures and the potential consequences of giving too much power and control to technology. By weaving these themes into the gameplay mechanics, Paranoia offers a unique and entertaining commentary on the dangers of advanced technology and the impact it can have on society. So, whether you're a fan of science fiction, a seasoned role player, or just someone looking to explore the world of AI, this podcast is the perfect starting point. But beware, listeners. Remember, in this world of artificial intelligence, trust is a luxury, and information is power. This is GM Word of the Week, and I'm Fiddleback. To really get to grips with the ideas behind artificial intelligence, it is probably best to go back to the first century CE and get to know Greek mathematician, physicist, and engineer, Hero of Alexandria. Unfortunately, that is nearly impossible, as little is known about him beyond exactly what I've just told you. However, he was one of the most prominent figures of his time, a real renaissance man of his day, even though his day was about 1400 years before the renaissance, a true jack of all trades. But what's really impressive about Hero was how he applied his knowledge to create amazing mechanical devices. He was a master of what was known as automation, making machines that could perform tasks automatically. One of his most famous creations was the Aeolipile, a primitive steam engine that used steam to generate rotary motion. Essentially a brass ball that spun when the water inside was heated, this was a major breakthrough in the field of mechanics, and it's still considered to be one of the first examples of a machine that was powered by steam. Hero was also known for his work with pneumatics, and he created several devices that used air pressure to perform specific tasks. One of these was the organ, a musical instrument that used air to create sound. Hero's organ was an early form of automaton, using hydraulic and pneumatic systems to play pre-programmed tunes. It was a mechanical device, not an electrical one like modern organs, and was operated by the flow of air or water rather than electricity. Hero's invention was a significant step forward in the development of programmable machines and helped lay the foundation for the development of modern robots and computers. It was one of the first examples of a machine designed to create music. Another of Hero's creations was the automatic theater. This was an early form of automation in which machinery was used to create highly sophisticated theatrical performance without the need for human actors. This was a unique idea, and it showcased Hero's understanding of mechanics and his ability to create complex machines that could perform a wide range of functions. The audience would watch in amazement as actors were lifted into the air, made to disappear and reappear, all with an amazing variety of special effects. The theater was equipped with a variety of complex little machines, including moving stages, automated curtains, and hydraulic systems, all controlled by a central system of gears, levers, and pulleys. The performance was created through a series of mechanical devices and machines that moved, 
made sounds, and even changed the background of the stage. The result was a captivating show that could entertain an audience as much for the performance as with its intricate devices. Unfortunately, the details of Hero's automatic theater have been lost over time, and we can now only imagine how it would have looked and operated. However, the legacy of Hero's invention has been long-lasting, and it has inspired many other engineers and inventors throughout history. His work continues to be studied and revered as an early example of the potential of automation and robotics, and as a testament to the power of human ingenuity and creativity. Then, along came something called the Islamic Golden Age. The Islamic Golden Age was a period of great cultural, economic, and scientific growth in the Islamic world, spanning from the 8th to the 14th century. During this time, the Islamic Empire expanded greatly and embraced diverse cultures and ideas, which led to significant advancements in fields such as mathematics, astronomy, medicine, and philosophy. Muslim scholars made important contributions to the study of geometry, trigonometry, and algorithms, and their works helped to preserve and further the mathematical knowledge of ancient civilizations such as Greece and Rome. The translation and preservation of Greek and Roman texts by Muslim scholars also helped to lay the foundation for the European Renaissance. The Islamic Golden Age was a time of great intellectual, cultural, and scientific activity, and its impact on the world continues to be felt to this day. Al-Khwarizmi, whom you may remember from our An Orange episode, lived in the 9th century and was a mathematician, astronomer, and geographer. He's often referred to as the father of algebra because he wrote a book called The Compendious Book on Calculation by Completion and Balancing, which introduced the mathematical field of algebra to the Western world. He also helped to popularize the Hindu-Arabic numeral system, which is still in use today all of which had a significant impact on the advancement of AI because mathematics and algorithms, which are named after him, is what allows computers to make decisions and learn from data by laying the groundwork for mathematical and computational thinking. One more notable contributor from the Islamic Golden Age was Al-Jazari, who was a polymath and inventor from Mesopotamia. Born in the 12th century, Al-Jazari was an inventor, engineer, and artisan, he was born in the city of Al Jazeera in modern-day Turkey, and he lived a life full of creativity and innovation. He excelled in a variety of fields from mechanical engineering to hydraulic systems. One of his most impressive contributions to the world of engineering was his book, The Book of Knowledge of Ingenious Mechanical Devices. This tome is chock full of detailed descriptions and illustrations of his inventions, many of which were very advanced for his time. From automatons that could play musical instruments to water clocks that could accurately tell time, Al Jazari was constantly pushing the boundaries of what was possible with mechanical engineering. What makes Al Jazari's work particularly impressive is the level of detail and complexity he achieved with his designs. Take his programmable robots, for example. These mechanical marvels were capable of performing various musical instruments, such as the flute and drums, through the use of gears, levers, and pulleys. He also designed hydraulic-powered automata, such as a castle gate that would open and close on command, and even a boat that could be operated remotely. And Al Jazari's inventions weren't just practical, they were also aesthetically pleasing. He was known for creating intricate and beautiful mechanical devices, often incorporating elements of calligraphy, geometric patterns, and other decorative motifs. It's like he was trying to make engineering look cool centuries before Elon Musk came along and made Twitter worse. So why does Al Jazari matter for the history of AI? Well, for starters, his inventions were some of the earliest examples of programmable machines. He created automatons that could perform specific actions based on certain inputs, like turning on a musical instrument when someone turned a crank. This was a crucial step towards developing machines that could make decisions based on their environment. Al Jazari was a visionary. He was a man who saw the potential of machines to do things that humans couldn't, and he worked tirelessly to turn his vision into a reality. After the Islamic Golden Age, the next significant milestone in the history of AI was the development of computer science and mathematics during the 20th century. In the 1940s and 1950s, computer scientists such as Alan Turing, John von Neumann, 
and Claude Shannon started to explore the concept of artificial intelligence and develop theories and mathematical models to create machines that could perform tasks typically associated with human intelligence. This work led to the development of the first AI programs and the creation of the field of computer science, which continued to evolve and expand over the next several decades. Today, AI has become a multidisciplinary field that combines computer science, mathematics, psychology, linguistics, and many other areas of study to create intelligent machines and systems that can learn, reason, and make decisions. Which is what some people are very afraid of. Probably in the back of everyone's mind, to a greater or lesser extent, is the problem I and my co-designers played around with in our game Transit, the spaceship RPG. The Artificial Intelligence Singularity The AI Singularity is a theoretical future event in which artificial intelligence surpasses human intelligence and becomes capable of recursive self-improvement, leading to an exponential increase in intelligence and a potentially uncontrollable outcome. This concept was first popularized by mathematician and computer scientist Werner Wing in the early 1990s. The idea is that once an AI system surpasses human intelligence, it could rapidly improve itself, leading to an intelligence explosion and a future scenario in which machines are vastly more intelligent than any human being. There is debate among experts as to whether the singularity is a realistic possibility or a science fiction scenario, and also as to what the implications of such an event might be. Some experts believe that a super-intelligent AI could lead to a utopian future in which machines help solve many of the world's problems. Others believe that a super-intelligent AI could pose a threat to humanity, either through malicious intent or through an unintended outcome, such as an AI system pursuing its goals in a way that is harmful to humanity. The concept of the AI singularity has been the subject of much speculation and debate in both academic and popular circles, with some experts arguing that we are far from achieving such an event, while others believe it could happen within the next few decades. Regardless, it remains a topic of ongoing research and discussion in the field of artificial intelligence and a constant worry. No doubt you have heard by now of ChatGPT. Artificial intelligence has been hailed by many as the future of content creation. Especially recently with the release into the wild of OpenAI's ChatGPT. It was trained on a large data set of text from the internet to generate human-like text and answer questions. Its training data includes information all the way through 2021. So ChatGPT's knowledge is current up until that point. Its primary purpose is to assist users by generating text in response to prompts provided to it and to answer questions to the best of its abilities based on its training data. It has the ability to analyze and process large amounts of data, and it can produce content that is similar to human-generated content. However, while AI has the potential to automate certain aspects of content creation, it is not a replacement for human writers. It is important to understand these limitations in order to use AI effectively. First, AI lacks creativity and originality. While it can produce content that is similar to human-generated content, it is unable to come up with new and innovative ideas on its own, and it is limited to producing content that follows certain rules and patterns. For example, AI is unable to think outside the box or consider unconventional ideas, and it is unable to draw inspiration from personal experiences, emotions, and imagination. This means that AI-generated content will always be limited and will never be able to truly capture the human experience. In order to be truly effective, content needs to be original and engaging, and this requires the creativity and imagination of a human writer. Second, AI is not able to fully understand the context and nuances of language. It is unable to grasp the subtleties of tone, emotion, and meaning that is so important in communication. For example, it may not fully understand figurative language and idioms. This can lead to content that is robotic, unengaging, and even confusing to readers. 
Content needs to be able to connect with readers on an emotional level and convey the intended message in a clear and effective way. And this requires a deep understanding of language and how it is used, which are skills that are unique to human writers. Third, AI is not able to take into account cultural differences and sensitivities. It is unable to understand and respect the diverse backgrounds and experiences of its audience. AI is not able to recognize and avoid using language or imagery that may be offensive or triggering to certain groups of people, and it is not able to take into account the cultural context in which the content will be consumed. Content needs to be appropriate and respectful of its audience, and this requires an understanding of the culture and of its potential audience. Finally, AI is not able to form personal connections with its audience. It is unable to connect with readers on an emotional level and create a sense of trust and authenticity. It can't engage with its audience and respond to feedback in a personal way. And it is unable to adapt its content to their specific needs and preferences. This is essential for building a successful and engaging online presence. Content needs to be able to build a relationship with its audience and engage them in a meaningful way on its own merits. This requires the ability to form personal connections, which is also unique to human writers. In today's world, where the competition for attention is fierce, it is more important than ever to have content that stands out and engages its audience. While AI may be able to automate certain aspects of content creation, it is not able to produce the kind of high-quality, engaging content that is necessary to succeed in today's online landscape. For this, we need creativity, understanding, and personal connection that only human writers can provide. And the potential risks and dangers posed by artificial intelligence depend on its development and deployment. If AI is developed and used in a responsible, ethical manner, it can bring numerous benefits to society. However, if it is developed without proper oversight or with malicious intent, it could pose a threat to humanity. The best way to ensure safety from AI is to prioritize research, development, and regulation that emphasizes safety, transparency, and accountability. But either way, it's fairly likely we'll still end up calling AI Friend Computer. Thank you for listening to this episode of GM Word of the Week. I hope you enjoyed it. It's important to note, whether you enjoyed it or not, that this entire episode, save this outro and credits section and about 50 words of additional text, was entirely generated by OpenAI's language model, ChatGPT. Admittedly, some of it was lightly massaged by my editorial eye in order to improve transition and make it flow, but aside from the 50 words mentioned before and that editorial work, it's all chat GPT. I'm curious what you thought of it. Drop me a line. The material was gathered through a series of interview questions, which sought a broad overview of the topic at first and then used increasingly specific questions to elucidate better more thorough and more in-depth responses. ChatGPT is quite good at providing very specific answers, but as always with computers, the answers are only as good as the questions asked. Those of you who have interacted with me on a personal level may realize that figuring out the right question to ask is part of what I do just on a normal day. This habit helped more than a little in getting useful material out of ChatGPT. But it should also be noted that ChatGPT is under no particular onus to be correct. The language models it trained on and the information it gathered came from anywhere and everywhere. Nor did I make any effort to correct it factually. Assume ChatGPT is as accurate as any other random internet person. In using GPT, it helped to have a sense of where the topic should go. Had I not known about paranoia or had a sense of the early history of automata, GPT would not have volunteered that information. And silly as it seems, without knowing that there was a rich tradition of AI use and misuse in science fiction, there was no particular clue in GPT's initial brief on the history of AI 
to send you looking there, either. Granted, how is the definitive standard of AI gone bad, upon which most of the others are based in film and latter-day sci-fi, but you have to know about it to ask about it. Fortunately, GPT was reasonably forthcoming when questioned. All in all, it took about 10 hours to interview ChatGPT and assemble everything into this episode's script, editing included. Would it have been faster or slower to look everything up myself and then put it into my own words and write it down? No idea. But what did help a little was to give GPT the entire script to the previous episode of this show and have it learn as much as it could of my writing style and then provide its responses in that style. It wasn't perfect. There were a lot of dudes and oh mans to clip out as if GPT thought I was some sort of surfer. But once that was trimmed out of opening paragraphs, the rest went pretty well. You can be the judge as to its success in replicating me off one 3,000 word script. Let me know what you think. Dude. This episode is a Fiddleback production and was researched, written, and produced by Brian Casey and OpenAI's ChatGPT. Find more episodes at gmwordoftheweek.com and follow the show on Twitter at gmwotw. And find ChatGPT at openai.com. You can help support the show at buymeacoffee.com slash fiddleback with both one-time and ongoing pledges. Check out the new bare minimum $2 bookmobile tier if you're looking for a no-frills way to give the show some ongoing support. Music is provided by Blue Dot Sessions, home of minimalist acoustic music for production and pleasure. Visit them at sessions.blue. Artificial intelligence is the last invention that humanity will ever need to make.